Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is August 8th of 2018, and it's uh, 11 a.m. in the morning. And this is going to be, uh, I'm going to cover a number of subjects. I'm going to jump around a little bit. I'm not sure how long this is going to be. Probably not too long. I'm not feeling all that great still. But... Uh, want to cover another an, another a number of points so this will be like a, a general blog uh, the first thing I want to do is congratulate the voters of Missouri because they overturned and rejected the Republican lawmakers who wanted a right to make Missouri a right to work state uh, doesn't right to work sound wonderful and great? How could somebody reject something like that? But uh, what the right to work movement is, and it's been around for a long time, is that uh, it's actually a law which has been passed in 27 United States states uh, to help uh, destroy workers' rights, uh, to injure union, the union movement, the labor union movement. And it's been uh, pretty successful. Like I said, it's in 27 states. Uh, by the way, Missouri voted to reject it yesterday. Or that was that today. That was yesterday, I believe. Uh, I'm from Missouri, let me say my little piece, which isn't as accurate now as it was at one time. So let me use this quote. Let's see. Don't tell me I forgot it. Let me see if I can remember it. Oh my God, how could I forget it? Oh no. Let's see. Show me state, let's see. Does it just start with I? Show me state. Oh. I'm gonna have to just Try to remember. I come from a state that raises corn and cotton and cockleburs and Democrats. And for all the eloquence neither convinces nor satisfies me, I'm from Missouri. You've got to show me. I think I got it right. So I was uh, born in Missouri, 1941, lived there. Well, my parents, uh, Jim and Betty, took me during World War II when I was a baby to California. We were there for about four years during World War II. They uh, built Liberty ships where they were welders, uh, and they belonged to the Boilermakers Union. And then after, when World War II came to an end, they moved back to Missouri, and they they brought me with them. They didn't leave me. And uh, my father then continued to work for the Boilermakers as a Boilermaker. And uh, my mother, who was you know a member out in, when she was like Roby the Riveter, 
uh, but she was a welder, not a riveter. Uh, she did other work and uh, eventually became a nurse. But my father was a union member, member of the Boilermakers all his life. Uh, when I got out of high school, after a short period of time, a year or so, I went to welding school. I became a, uh, uh, a Boilermaker. I joined the union. And... Uh, worked as a welder. I changed companies, of course, and then I wasn't. Uh, I took a withdrawal card. And, uh, if I went back to a border making job, you know, I could activate my card, but then I worked for the United Auto, or not for the, but I worked a uh, company for the United Auto Workers and so forth and so on. Then eventually I ended up uh, after 10 or so years uh, getting married and the wife started a tropical fish shop and I helped run that for four years uh, then I uh, uh, sold s stuff uh, to businesses printing for a short period of time uh, then I worked uh, contract security for a short period of time, then worked hospital security for 30 years, and uh, retired in 2000. Then I continued to work uh, in security and uh, Florida and Texas and uh, in Florida then again I worked uh, security for a while and then I worked for uh, did pricing for CompUSA so I've had a I worked for the post office in the past for a short period of time I quit the post office a career or civil service appointment so but let's go back to when I got out of high school I went to real estate school I then uh, went to welding school and just about, I worked then at a wrought iron decorative iron shop for a while, and then went to work for, in Kansas, first in Walker, for the Darby Corporation. And Harry Darby was a Republican senator, and he, of course, he owned the Darby Corporation that during World War II they made landing craft and I'm sure other things. And when I worked for them, they were, we were rebuilding railroad cars. And I worked for them uh, for exactly one year. Kansas, by the way, was a right-to-work state. And uh, I'm not sure how great Kansas was then, but it's a shithole now because of the right-to-work law and because of their po politi Republican politics or whatever. Uh, but when I worked for the Darby Corporation as a welder, that was a... The union had, the boilermakers had organized there, but of course it made it difficult uh, in Kansas to have a union because of it being a right to work state and there were things there to make it difficult. Uh, you could, you had the opportunity at the Darby Corporation to join the union, but you didn't have to join the union. And, uh, but I think most all of us did. But it didn't do an awful lot of good because Kansas was a fucking right-to-work state. Uh, during the time that I worked, and I worked a solid exact, I quit on my anniversary date, and then I worked someplace else and then I came back and worked in the Darby Corporation shipyard, which was outside, down by the river, building railroad cars. And I worked there about three months. But during the time that I worked for the Darby Corporation, I don't know how many injuries there were, because the union didn't have a lot of strength and ability to do things. Uh, I was almost seriously injured. I wasn't actually uh, I was almost seriously injured three or four times. Uh, 
while I was working at the shipyard, uh, they had a railroad engine, you know, a railroad engine that pulled behind it a platform that had a railroad uh, crane on it for picking up and moving giant pieces of uh, steel. That one picture was kind of uh, kind of blurry for some reason. Uh, anyway, uh, the worker there, there was a worker who, you know, gave corrections to the engine for, you know, that type of stuff. Uh, he fell in front of the engine and uh, had uh, both legs and an arm cut off. But the Darby Corporation, they gave him a job as a timekeeper. He could still, he still had one arm left. He could do that. Like I said, uh, Harry Darby was a senator in Kansas, a Republican senator. But anyway, I saw the right to work, you know, law in operation. I worked a construction job at a Texaco uh, refinery and bought a making job in Louisiana, Convent, Louisiana. Uh, that was before OSHA, the agency set up to help protect workers in the United States. All of these things, by the way, the right wing, I should say Republicans, Republicans, well, I shouldn't lump Republicans in, not all of them, but the right wing, oh, they love the right to, right to work law. Oh, they fucking love it. They do everything in the world they can to promote the right to work law. Everything they can to hurt union workers. Everything they can to hurt the uh, rights of little people. Um... Uh, the right wing Republicans, though they hated OSHA. Uh, what OSHA did is came in with a set of rules. You know, people have to uh, have to wear hard hats. Uh, people have to wear safety glasses. Uh, when I worked in at the convent, in Louisiana, Texaco refinery. Have you ever seen a refinery? The tall, massive towers going up there. Uh, I worked as a welder and I helped sometimes weld the little step on the side of these things that you stood on and then you went up the thing carrying your uh, welding rod and your uh, tools, chipping hammer and what have you and there was no cage around you. Uh, I did have a safety belt but the safety belt was for once I got all the way up high, then I could hook it onto the railing or something up there. It wasn't like uh, OSHA's requirements that came in that you had to have a cage around you, and as you climbed up, you hooked up your safety thing to go up in case you fell. Uh, but the right wing, the Republicans, they hated OSHA and they have done everything they can to, you know, restrict its attempts at uh, making it safer for workers. Uh, so Missouri, the show me state, I'm, I'm familiar with, you know, what it's like to work in a right to work state. If you're not familiar with the struggle here in the United States and around the world, but if you're not here familiar, I can't give you the history of the labor movement, but uh, you ought to look it up. Um, in the early days of the labor movement, workers asked for 
you know, no child labor. They didn't want child labor. Of course, they didn't want their little kids working in factories with dangerous machines. Um, they wanted, you know, they wanted some rights. And, uh, of course, they didn't ask for anything <laughs> too crazy in the beginning. They just asked for something. But eventually they were asking, you know, hey, we would like an eight-hour work day. We'd like a 40-hour work week. Uh, no child labor. Uh, being able to have, you know, eat a lunch. Uh, there were things, there were company towns. Uh, the entire town was owned by the company, a coal mining company, a mining company, uh, uh, could be anything. And when you went to work there, some of them, they, the company didn't even pay you money. They just gave you coupons that you could spend at the company store, you know, to get food or whatever you needed. The company owned the housing you were in. If you asked for any kind of rights or if you didn't do your uh, maximum amount of work they, that they thought you should, you they kicked your ass out of there. When workers uh, tried to get rights, uh, the governors of this, you know, well, the company would uh, use their company guards to beat or kill workers, uh, to kick them out of housing. Uh, the, you know, the governors of the states would uh, use, well, the company would bring in Pinkerton's uh, guards who would uh, beat or kill workers who ask for basic human, you know, human rights. Uh, workers were accused of being uh, anarchists and uh, bombers and all types of stuff and many of them were hung uh, illegally or legally, you know, were executed. Uh, the states, you know, usually knuckled under or maybe always knuckled under to the big corporations. National Guard would be called out to beat workers who uh, were striking or thinking of striking. Many workers were uh, many workers were killed. Uh, the National Guard would be called out to uh, attack workers at their homes and the workers, you know, towns. Uh, workers who had to move out of the company-owned town. Some of them moved outside into the a desert or whatever and would set up camps. National Guard troops would attack and kill them and their families, remember, were with them. At least once the federal government even used the military, the U.S. military, to attack uh, workers and aircraft came in. Of course, we're not talking about sack bombers or whatever. This was a long time ago, you know. Uh, I guess biplanes or whatever came in and the military, U.S. military even dropped bombs on uh, workers and blew up men, women, and children in the, the camps or whatever. So because of labor unions, uh, because of Franklin D. Roosevelt and, and uh, a lot of hard-working people, union people, I was a member of the Boilermakers and United Auto Workers, and I guess that's the two unions I was a member of. Uh, things got better. Eight hour work days, uh, time and a half pay, all type of stuff, but the, uh, the right wing has done everything they can to go back to the old days and uh, they've been pretty successful in it. And the right to work laws were one of the things that they right to work, you know, laws. Be wary of anything that, you know. So I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm going to move on because I'm not feeling well. Um,
so sad to see the the news nowadays and to see how things are going. My father eventually became a union official uh, with the Boilermakers Union, a business agent, and uh, he was a my father was a sort of a Archie Bunker type of person. Of course, he was prejudiced, but you know, so far as the union was concerned, he wasn't. He uh, stood alone and at, at great cost to himself to, uh, back then there was, well, there was the union, there was the shops. I worked in the beginning in the Darby Corporation shops. They weren't really shops, even the factory that I, even the first and Walker place I worked at, <laughs> there was, you'd freeze your ass off in the winter because there was sort of a structure up. There was a roof, there was some side, but basically railroad engines could just come in, so you froze your ass off. And the shipyard, of course, there was down by the river. There, there wasn't any structure at all. So you were just outside. I was underneath the railroad cars, and when I, uh, if I mistakenly hit the railroad, whatever, I'd get a shock through my system. Uh, but my father eventually became, uh, he was elected, first he was elected to, uh, I forget what he was, uh, secretary, I think. So there was president, vice president, secretary, or whatever. And uh, so he was elected to office, and then he was selected by the workers to be an assistant business agent. So anyway, there were shops, and then there was out in the field. And uh, when I worked in Convent, Louisiana, that was out in the field, and you made a lot more money. And in the beginning, I don't think, of course, unions were uh, getting sick. Uh, you know, local unions. And then, of course, you were part of the International Brotherhood of Boilermakers, Blacksmiths, you know, so forth and so on. But for the four states that Local 83 covered of Boilermakers. Uh, there weren't any uh, blacks who were working out in the field. Those were better jobs. You made a lot more money. Uh, but blacks could work in the shops. I told you I started out working in the shop, uh, person walk, the shipyard. Uh, my father. Of course, uh, I didn't ask my father and my father, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask my father to put me out in a field job. Uh, and uh, he wouldn't have done it probably if I'd asked him. Uh, so the way I got a field job was eventually when other Boilermaker unions would call around and send the word around, that's before the internet, you know, I think they might have had facts in, but uh, they would call and say, we need welders, you know, we need boilermakers in, uh, uh, see, the shipyard was actually where they called, I uh, can't remember now, Pascagola, Mississippi, at a shipyard. Uh, so my dad said, uh, the union in Pascagoula, Mississippi needs welders at the shipyard, you know, you can go. That was out of my dad's area. He wasn't doing me any special favor. The unions were calling around all of the United States, we need welders, you know, different places. So I headed for Pascagoula, Mississippi to be a welder at the shipyard. But on the way down, I stopped in the New Orleans union office and asked if they had anything, and they did at Convent, Louisiana. So they gave me a welding test and I passed the welding test, and I worked in Convent, Louisiana for a while on a Texaco refinery. 
But uh, anyway, back to my father and the union. He was a union man, so uh, black members of the union, you know, said, hey, you know. And my father said, you know, they're union members, they should be, and uh, he, my father had a lot of uh, union members and there were a couple other business agents. My father was an assistant business, there was another assistant business agent and there was the business agent. And uh, anyway, my father got blacks uh, able to go out on field jobs. Uh, later on, the U.S. government uh, passed some regulations, Department of Labor or something like that, allowing uh, unions to sort of in a way discriminate, discriminate. What it was was, you know, there were rules and unions had rules set up, and uh, but apprenticeship programs were set up and in order for the apprenticeship program to work you know you would take a young person brand new in the union or you would hire somebody in and say okay you're you're going to go through the apprentice program with our union you know it could be pipe fitting iron worker uh, any any one of the trade you know type things and so the way it worked was these were set up and you would pick very few people, but you'd pick a few young people, bring them into the union, and then when these jobs popped up, the field jobs or whatever, you would uh, take your apprentice and put him in there, maybe over other people who were members of the union, old timers who were in where, you know, the, the way it should have worked was seniority would have worked and you would have had, of course you st still had them going out, but you would take one or two or whatever it was, apprentices, and you would, okay, this person is going to go there and they're going to learn the basics at this site, this job. Maybe it was blueprint reading, maybe it was welding, maybe it was uh, using the acetylene cutting torch, uh, maybe it was layout, all these different, and so you had to have it so, you know, some jobs you wouldn't have that. So you had to have it so you could send the apprentice out and get them through their one or two year program so that when they were done, they were, they knew everything about the, I wasn't that good at blueprint reading and because I didn't go through an apprenticeship program. I read about, studied up on blueprint reading. Oh, I don't feel well. Uh, Uh, and other things, but these other, so my father, you know, the uh, blacks, and I'm not sure, but even that they had to come to him, I, when the apprenticeship program came up after it started, my father said, you know, well, black union members, our fellow workers, you know, our brothers, that's the way union members regard, you know, brothers or sisters if you had females in there. Uh, so my father got over, you know, it was hard to do. He got blacks into the apprenticeship program. My point being, my father was a man of his times, not as bad as my mother's father. My grandfather was a member of the clan. But uh, even though my father had the normal prejudices, I guess, of somebody like Archie Bunker, when it came to the union, you know, these other workers were, you know, they were brothers. They may have been black, may have been, I'm not sure how many Hispanics there were, but you know, they were brothers and they were treated that way. Uh, enough of that. Anyway, congratulations to Missouri voters. I'm going to mention this and then go, I'm going to, uh, on Amazon there's a movie, Last Flag Flying, and don't read this Wikipedia thing because you'll know the entire story. Also, don't look at the, you can go to Amazon and you can see the trailer. 
if you watch that trailer, they're going to give you too much. Just take my word. Last flag flying. Uh, it's really well done. It's well acted. Uh, watch it. Let me know what you think, too. Especially if you were in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, especially if you've had, you know, if you're a, a family who's had somebody in the, you know, the military service. Uh, if, uh, you know, just uh, kind of comment. Let me know what you think. I'm recommending to you Last Flag Flying. There again, don't read the Wikipedia thing because it'll tell you the entire story. Don't watch the trailer. You can go to Amazon and, uh, you know, if you watch the trailer, it just gives you a little too much information. So you just take my word for it. Uh, last flag flying. Um, everybody's commenting about Alex Jones. Um, so let me comment a little bit. He's a despicable piece of shit. Uh, low class scumbag. One of the worst people around. Uh, I don't think I need to go into, I think probably an awful lot of you know, uh, know about him. Uh, some of his videos have been, I'm not sure exactly how much Facebook has gone in and I'm not sure if they've actually removed him totally. Apple has removed some of his from their Apple uh, place where you go watch a podcast or whatever. YouTube has removed. I'm not sure exactly how much they've removed. Of They've removed some of the videos. Uh, and now uh, some right-wing sites, some Republican right-wing sites are sort of defending this low, uh, this despicable. Right? If you don't know don't even bother to check on this guy. Just take my word for it. I'm 77 years old. I've seen a lot of... And this this guy is the worst. Uh, but now a lot of... Well, Trump liked him. Trump called him, I think, after uh, Trump was elected and was interviewed on his show, I believe. And... Uh, Alex Jones is calling on Trump, help me, save me, I'm under attack because of you, I'm your supporter. Uh, uh, Alex Jones is, after the school shootings, he says they didn't really happen, that they were staged uh, events and that actors were used, that no kids were killed. Uh, he says that the contrails up in the sky that you see from the jet aircraft or whatever are chemicals put out by the government of the United States to make people gay and, and uh, I mean just he's the one who came up or if he didn't come up with it he adopted and promoted he's the one who said that in Washington D.C. there was a, a children's pizza place that parents took and still do take their kids to and he said in the back room that uh, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama were having sex to, with uh, with kids, that it was a, a pornographic, uh, what would you call sex with kids, uh, pornographic pedophile place, and that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama went there and had sex with kids. And he put out this craziness uh, that hurt the business of this pizza place in Washington, D.C. And finally, one of the crazy followers of Alex Jones went in there with a gun. Sort of feel sorry for the guy. The, the guy went in there to save children from, this, from Hillary Clinton and uh, Barack Obama. He went in there and fired a gun off in the air. Luckily, he didn't kill anybody. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he traumatized a lot of little kids that were there having pizza and playing the various games in the place. And uh, 
this Alex Jones I've ran into even one of the guys there's a guy who lives in here who I was at my mailbox and ran into the guy and you could kind of tell because Alex Jones is so crazy he his followers they call you a communist say communist they call you three or four I mean that when it when they talk about somebody you're a communist uh, you're a pedophile oh I guess wick, uh, witches you're, you're uh, sorcerer that's you know it's like they hit you with these three they don't just say I think you're a communist uh, or whatever they hit you with and that's uh, you, you can just tell uh, but what the way I said for a long time in my blog which nobody reads my blog anymore but I said the thing to do is sue Alex Jones sue him when this guy that uh, went to save <laughs> the kids at uh, Pizzeria Place, when he went in and, and uh, when other people did things too, uh, you know, crazy stuff or whatever, the thing to do would be to sue Alex Jones. Sue him. And now, right now, because of this, uh, some the parents of some of the kids who were killed the kindergartners and first graders that Alex Jones has attacked these people, the parents. I think it was seven times the, the uh, parents of, he, protect, he picked on particularly some of them, you know, uh, said they were crisis actors, that they didn't lose a child. Meanwhile, their six-year-old was there in the cemetery and but anyway because of Alex Jones these parents had to finally move out of the town where their child was in the cemetery they've had to move seven times I believe it is or was it 17 times I forget seven times let's say because people are attacking them threatening them and they uh, anyway they them and a few other of the family are suing Alex Jones Alex Jones has turned around and suing suing them for some reason uh, but the thing to do is sue him see if you can end up owning his house his car putting him in debt for the rest of that's the thing you know that's the thing to do and in some of these other cases that's the thing to do when you get somebody who's so evil uh, that you know that's the thing to do sue uh, well, I'm not going to go into the other cases of this type of stuff, but I've been saying for years, sue, 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 sue. But anyway, he's crying now because he's been, uh, he hasn't been totally, you know, cut off, and he still can stream. I was streaming video before with no money, I was streaming video before there was YouTube or any of the streaming companies. I streamed from my own computer. Of course, I had a you know, inexpensive computer, and I probably could stream six or seven streams to people. And if anybody more logged in, they just wouldn't get my computer to slow down. You know, Alex Jones can uh, he can hook up with another company, or he can just stream from his own you know, server system or whatever, but, so, um, I think that's it, and that's good, because I need to get something out of my stomach, and uh, probably go back to bed. I've been in the hospital, I was in the hospital for six weeks, six weeks, no, six days, it seemed like six weeks, and I've been out maybe for five weeks or six weeks, and I'm still not better, maybe a little bit better, but the problem is the powerful, and oh, that's what I wanted to talk about, did I put that bill here, I, that's something I wanted to, now I'll talk about that next time. I want to talk about how health care insurance and 
what have you works, but I think I've done enough for now, and plus I'm not feeling well. Need to get the door to my room open, get some of the air conditioning blowing in here, and I need to get something in my stomach, and uh, I do thank you for uh, for watching.